Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to the bar. Please excuse the uh, all the different drawings that I have on my blackboard back here. Uh, somebody decided to buy for me a collection of Sharpie, like chalk markers and stuff, and I've just been having a wonderful time with it. I figured that the chalk markers would look a lot more vibrant than just the regular pieces of chalk that I normally have back here, and honestly, I'm I'm really close to it, so I really can't tell the difference too much. But like, I mean, I guess it looks pretty cool. I really haven't had a chance to check. I just cleaned the back the back blackboard, and uh, I haven't rewritten anything up there. So I decided to make the most of my time. I might as well just draw a bunch of stuff up there with mm, either some relation to what's going on here, perhaps not so relation going on here. Dearest, who I see back there, what's your opinion on the chalk markers back here? How does it look? Cleaner? Okay. Yeah, they're not as bumpy. Like, not as bumpy. Exhale, I see. Your well, they can't see that. They can see this stuff. Bumpy, as opposed to... Not so bumpy, I suppose? In any case, that's that's not what we're here for. This is not a drawing stream or anything like that. It's not. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with cocktails. So, let me tell you about a cocktail book that I came across over the weekend. The story goes that Anna and I were walking through the streets of Philadelphia when she said, I have been struck by the spirit of giving. I must buy someone a gift. I was like, all right, let's go for a walk in Philadelphia. Let's see what we can find. I have to go to that one small... Alley's Wagon. Yes, but like, is it a souvenir shop? No, souvenir it's, shop. is it really a souvenir shop? It's a souvenir shop. I don't know. It sold soaps. It sold chocolate. It sold cocktail paraphernalia and cocktail it books, sold apparently. Souvenir -like sold souvenirs type items themed to Philadelphia. It was all right. Not always themed. Not always themed to Philadelphia. I like the soaps. I think the soaps were something that I vibed with most of all because at least a lot of them had curse words on them. Um, at least one... I think one flavor flavor of soap was like this meeting could have been an email or there was probably other ones but i'm completely blanking on any of it do you remember any of like that the, the raunchy the one ones that, out that was the, no, no no there was the one that definitely had the word fuck in it oh not my Problem. Oh, and maybe maybe that was it. I don't, I don't know. If I if I go back, I mean, I'm running out of I'm running out of soap, so I might have to go back to Ali's Wagon to purchase not only maybe another. I think I did see another cocktail book there. It was about I think it was about floral cocktails, I believe. I don't know what it meant because I saw it literally on my way out, and I did not have a chance to look any any deeper into that. Um, but it seemed but it seemed cool. I'm running out of soap. The last soap that I bought actually was a soap in the shape of a dragon. Supposedly it looks like it supposedly it smells like coffee. I don't think it really smells like coffee not anymore it's just kind of like it looks like a really detailed glittery dragon it's got a d20 in the center that as i continue to wash my hands i'm getting closer and closer to it's like a purple translucent sparkly thing i already have a dye like that but i'm not complaining it's interesting to see like the the important features of the dragon kind of melt away the more and more i rub my hands against it it used to look very detailed it had scales and wings and a tail and now it kind of looks like a fetus because all the facial structure has been rubbed off, all the scales have been rubbed off, there's no real distinguishing characteristics left about it, aside from what probably looked like it could have been where its eyes were. And even when there were eyes, they were closed. And it kind of looked, it was like, like that sleeping dragon, where like, it looks like it's kind of laying on the ground in like a supine position, sleeping, um, except within- Supine is on your back. Supine is, it was on its back, yeah? I guess it's, it's on, on its, its side. Crummy. It's kind of on its, it's side. Prone. It's prone. It's a prone dragon. I rubbed my hands against a prone dragon, and after months and months of doing so, it has now regressed back to a seemingly fetal form. I'm happy about it. And eventually I'm going to need new soap, and maybe I'll go back there and get some uh, aptly named soaps about the way that I feel about daily life. Like, things be could maybe have been words about meetings that could have been emails, or emails that should be meetings. I've seen both things. In any case, wow, nice one, dear. She dropped the button. He's cleaning. At the store, I managed to find this book on mezcal, mezcal and tequila cocktails, Mixed Drinks for the Golden Age of Agave by Robert Simonson. It's either Simonson or maybe Simonson or something. I'm not so sure. But I was actually, I was particularly interested in a book like this because I feel like mezcal and tequila are two spirits that I, I feel like are underutilized or underappreciated in my life. I think for the longest time, I know my mother's favorite spirit is 
tequila and so i think her favorite brand is like patron or something and she would always be mixing herself tequila cocktails and i would be able to smell from a mile away the fact that she was drinking a tequila cocktail because tequila has a very distinct odor associated with it or at least the tequilas that she had which was patron mostly i don't think i ever saw any other tequilas at my parents house other than other than patron which is cool i guess if you're into that stuff it's really expensive but so i I had this association when I first started getting into cocktails that tequila was my least favorite spirit. Just because like that I could pick it out out of a cocktail, I thought that maybe, yeah, I, I don't really know. Maybe it was coming from a place of like, I actually didn't like it. I was still coming to terms with the flavor of alcohol or that because it was so obvious compared to the other flavor components of the drink that it almost spoiled the fun. It spoils the fun of being like, oh, I wonder what spirit is in this cocktail. It's like, oh, it's definitely tequila. But I mean, as time has gone on, I've been able to find like various different, I actually feel like I look out for tequila cocktails now because I want to see like how the tequila flavor is either hidden, incorporated, changed around, transformed. And I've seen a lot of different examples of that. Can I bring any up off the top of my head? No, because I'm forgetful and I do not write things down very often. But that's why I go to the stores and buy books like this. Now, in addition to tequila, there's also mezcal. Tequila, if I'm correct in saying, is only from the blue Weber agave plants and has to come from, I think it's the area of Oaxaca, Mexico, and that's like O-A-X-A-C-A. I'm spelling that correctly um but other than that like if it's any other type of agave if it's not from that particular area then it's an agave spirit that they call mezcal and i believe that there are also there's laws that govern why it, what spirits can be called tequila and i believe there's also laws that also govern what can be called mezcal i don't know what those laws are but hopefully in a book like this it should tell me in and, and so going back to what i was saying before i feel like i don't have a lot of cocktails in my repertoire that use tequila or even mezcal mezcal at least the one that i have is kind of smoky i've used it once or twice it reminds me a lot of a very peaty whiskey that i had once upon a time called lagavulin but there are plenty of other whiskeys and scotches out there that also have that like that like ground earthy smoky like fertilizer paint varnish like characteristic about them and the mezcal that i got which was just like i just went to the store and i found one mezcal and i was like this is going to be the one and i was very surprised as i was flipping through this cocktail book that it mentions specifically this particular family of mezcals i guess i'll, I'll just pull it up without no, I'm not a tease or anything like that. But supposedly, there's a lot, there's a whole family of mezcals done by this Del Magüe. Um, I don't know if they're like a mezcal artisanal. Del Magüe being, I guess, the producer, maybe the people who like actually harvest whatever agave they're using. And I learned from this book that there's, I think, six different types of Del Magüe mezcals and i have vita it's the only one that i have but there's a couple of cocktails in this book that i like i saw del magway via vita in the recipe specifically and i was like oh my god i have to have this because i literally only have one mezcal and i want to know how to use it and if i have the one mezcal and i figure out how to use it in these cocktails then perhaps there are other recommendations in this book which there are to be able to allow me to kind of like branch out a bit find different tequilas find different mezcals to really like like figure out what the heck is going on um because i only have one mezcal in my collection i only have i think i have two tequilas in my collection i think i have two but honestly i feel like i'm a very uninformed buyer when i go to the store actually i just had an example of this two weeks ago when i went to the store and i bought myself some red wine and i could have gone to the liquor store which i know sells wines from all over the world various different types of grapes varietals and areas but I decided to go to Giant instead because I was particularly un... I wasn't attached to getting any particular type of wine. I just wanted red wine and I was going to be satisfied no matter what I got. So I picked up, I think, a Zinfandel, a, a Malbec, and there was, there was one other one in there and I can't remember what it was. Um, just because I wanted red wine and i didn't exactly know what i was looking for now i'd like to be able to hop on my horse or high horse and say i know a thing or two about wine because i took a single wine class in college um but i should step down off that high horse because again i don't remember any of it it's just things that like i guess my body remembers like subliminally because when you drink things when you smell things when you observe things it kind of becomes a part of your like not mental memory but i, I guess it's all mental technically because i'm just i'm just a meat bag being controlled by another piece of complex meat in my head um, but in any case, I'm no expert on any of this stuff. I'm just a novice. Maybe you are too. Awesome. Welcome to the club. And so, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that train of thought there. In any case, I have a single mezcal. 
it's mentioned in this book, and I wanted to make a cocktail of it. And I wanted to see, like, I feel like I'm not the kind of person, oh, I remember what I was talking about. It was me not being a well-informed buyer. When I went to the store and I was trying to find Mezcal, I did not know what I was looking for. I was just looking for a bottle that said Mezcal. And honestly, what I picked off off the shelf was not something that I was prepared for because I didn't really know what it was like aside from, oh, it also uses ag agave? It must taste like tequila, I guess, but it really doesn't. Not from what I can tell, at least. And I was very, very surprised to see that that it tasted like something that wasn't what I had usually likened with the tequila. Now, I'm sure we could go all into talking about how, like, these type of, like, a lot of the characteristics of whiskeys can be, like, mirrored in other spirits. Because, like, you can put, you can put, like, tequila in a barrel and it starts to get that, like, those, like, uh, barrel notes to it. You could put it in the ground and let it sit there, I suppose. Whatever the processes of whiskeys are, um, I'm sure that there's a way to mimic it in various other spirits. But I know barely anything about it. And I, it's probably because I'm young young and spry guy haven't really had much experience out in the world but also because i should keep more notes and i'm trying to do that it's all a part of the process though in any case so this book um mezcal and tequila cocktails was uh like written in a way i remember i read the forward in here and it was kind of talking about how like i think a few like uh, a number of years ago like tequila and mezcal really wasn't that widely available if you were to find it out there you would only find like one provider or two for like like maybe one provider of mezcal and two providers for tequila if i had to guess i'm guessing at least one of the tequila staples was like Patron, I suppose, but I wasn't alive back then. I can ask my mother about that. Um, and so it's kind of th this 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 guy, this guy Robert, was kind of observing the world around him and seeing like mezcal and tequila become more and more prevalent, and thought, well, dang darn it, let's make a book about it and put a bunch of cocktails in it. I think I don't know if some of these are like originals of him. I know they've got various different like um, credits to. I'm guessing they're different bars and stuff. Yeah, looks like different bars and locations like wherever for example the maximilian affair is by misty Kalkoffin, green street boston 2008 and it's actually kind of cool i don't think i've ever had a book like this that gives specific like credits to who concocted the drink the first time when they concocted it and like i guess where they were at for example Me the mezcal cocktail thad vogler bar agricole san francisco 2010 uh, I don't have, it's another one of those books that as I was looking through it, I realized that I didn't have a lot of the ingredients in it. Um, oftentimes when I go to the store and I'm trying to figure out like what kind of spirits I want to buy, I'm, I'm stuck with this decision that there's, there's so many out there. And I feel like I have a pretty, pretty well stocked bar so far, but there are like other very specific ingredients out there like Lele Blanc or Punt de Mez or specific spirits like Cointreau or Aperol over Campari that I'm like, well... I don't really feel like I have a need for this right now because I don't know any cocktails in my collection that call for this particular ingredient. So, for example, I wasn't going to go out of my way to... I've, I've heard of, like, Punta Mez before. P-U-N-T-E-M-E-S. With two spaces in between. The the E is surrounded by two spaces. Um, and I never bought it. I've seen it in the store before, but I've never bought it because I don't know anything about where what, what kind of cocktail it would go into. And I pick up this book here, and I see Punta Mez all over the place it's in a bunch of these different cocktails here and that's kind of one of the reasons i guess i waste my money on these books is because i wind up flipping through them and i start realizing that these ingredients are popping up more often the more often i see these ingredients pop up the more i'm like wow there's an entire collection of cocktails that i can't make right now but i know about and the only thing i'm blocked off from is this particular ingredient and i think i've been trying to figure out a way just internally to be able to determine like what what the collection could do what the collection might need for various different spirits um and there's a whole other argument to be told about like specialty ingredients like syrups that you make on your own or different types of like special infusions and stuff like also flipping through this book this this, this stream is just gonna be about this book today because i'm I, I i really really am a fan of this book so far and i'm barely even through it there was one ingredient that was literally lapsung suchong infused vermouth and it's exactly what it sounds like if you know what lapsung suchong is it's a particular type of tea i found it to be very smoky it's like a campfire it tastes awesome at least in my opinion and i feel like it this particular tea like puts me in that zone and I think the one time I tried, to, I, I, I drank all of it, I used all of it. And the one time I tried to buy more, which was like, I think a year or two ago, the place that I usually go to was completely out of Laps and Suchong. And I was like, darn, must be pretty popular. And evidently it is. 
but the ingredient that's mentioned in this book is just an infused vermouth. And how, like, I, I, it, it was taken aback for a moment because I didn't realize how simple it would be. How would you think to infuse tea into a spirit? It's simple. You take the tea bag and you put it into the spirit and you leave it there just like anything else would. It's just like steeping your tea in hot water, except it slow infuses into some, you know, some bigger solvent around it. Which, I, when I saw it, I was like, why didn't I know about this already? Like, that just seems so, it seems so obvious, but I didn't think about it. Um, but now, with these books literally staring me right in the face and being like, it's that easy to do, it's something that we can kind of add to our little cocktail repertoire. In addition, I'd like to keep more syrups here, and so I bought myself a mini fridge, but my mini fridge was apparently lost in transit somewhere between here and wherever I ordered it from. It was very sad, but I got my refund for that today, and we ordered another one, and supposedly I will have a fridge back here and not this not this makeshift cooler that, I mean, it keeps the ice well enough and everything else in there well enough as well, but it'd be so much nicer just to have a refrigerator. In any case, so as I was flipping through this book, I was like, well, I I want to make a cocktail. I got to make a cocktail from it. And there actually wasn't that many. There was only a couple of them that I feel like that I could make because I didn't have like the right ingredients. And I'm not talking like, oh, it called for orange curacao and I had some orange liqueur instead. It's like, I don't even have these ingredients at all. For example, Punta Mez is all over the place or particular types of mezcals or particular like brands of spirits, which, um, which we'll get to. So let's get into it. So the cocktail I plan on making this evening, just one for the evening, I'm gonna keep things short tonight to open up the evening for other things, um, is, I have two of them marked off, but I picked which one I wanted to do. This cocktail is called Fearman's Folly, and it uses dry vermouth, mezcal, cocoa bitters or mole bitters, and creme de banana or some other uh, banana liqueur. To read the description of Fearman's Folly, which was apparently coined by Dylan O'Brien, at Price Fighter, Emeryville, California in 2019. So apparently, this is a relatively new cocktail that just popped up in the last couple of years. Maybe during like the beginning of like the pandemic stuff, whenever, I don't know, I guess pandemic was like 2020. Oh, no, 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 yeah, it was, it was 2020. So it was like pre-pandemic stuff. Furman's Folly's description goes a little something like this. This cocktail presents a nice, clean way to enjoy mezcal. The recipe is unmistakably in the martini family and provides a platform for the spirit in the same way a martini does for gin. A touch of banana liqueur is welcome. It rounds out the drink and cuts back on its austerity. Price Fighter uses Del Magui Vita mezcal here. That's the mezcal that I have. Oh my god. But I've made it with a few others and found they work well. Each delivers a slightly different drink, just as using a different gin will get you a different martini. Vermouth-wise, Prize Fredder uses Carpano Dry, and for the banana liqueur, there is no debate. There are a few that match Tempest Fugit in flavor and complexity. The name of the drink is taken from the protagonist of Malcolm Lowry's novel, Under the Volcano made in 1947. Said O'Brien, because it struck me as the kind of thing a British alcoholic might have drunk in the 40s while whiling away the day. So apparently, this is some answer to, instead of as the gin would be to the martini, it's the mezcal to, I guess, the mezcal to the martini, I suppose. It's its own version of that. Um, as I was kind of hanging around here before stream, I just, I, I, as I mentioned, I completely erased the blackboard. I decided to just make a bunch of drawings. That's why I drew a volcano, because apparently it came from a book called Under the Volcano, which I guess there's nothing really stopping me from determining what Under the Volcano is, because I'm curious. Under the Volcano is a book, but also a film that came out in 2021. But what is the novel about? It's about Malcolm Lowry, and it tells the story of Jeffrey Furman. Furman. Under the Volcano is a novel by English writer Malcolm Lowry, published in 1947. The novel tells the story of Jeffrey Furman, an alcoholic British consul in the Mexican city of Cu Cuauhnahuac. It's spelled Q-U-A-U-H-N-A-H-U-A-C. On the Day of the Dead in November 1930, 1939. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Furman's Folly. I don't know what Furman's Folly is, but apparently it involved mezcal. Maybe? Who knows? In any case, I saw this one and was like, oh, it uses dry vermouth. Haven't used that in a while. Oh, it uses creme de banana or some banana liqueur. 
I haven't used that one in a while either. And it uses co uh, chocolate bitters, which I don't know if I've ever actually used on stream before in a cocktail. I just, I think the only time that I've used my chocolate bitters is I put it on some, uh, uh, I think some vanilla ice cream and it made it taste really, really good. You can also put bitters in like literally any soda, bitters and soda, it's a thing. And it tastes awesome, depending on how much bitters you put in there. I think if you go too heavy on the Angostura, it might get a little, get, might get a little astringent bit bitter. Hence, you know, the whole bitters thing. Um, but ultimately, it can be a pretty a pretty pleasant experience. So for Furman's Folly, the first thing that we need to do is we need to chill a glass, a coupe glass specifically. And I only have one coupe glass. It's this little guy here. And the way that I'm going to chill that, because I don't have any flash chillers here, is I'm just going to put some ice in it. Grab some from my very conveniently placed cooler down here. And I'll just put a couple in there. I don't think it's going to be sitting for too long, but it should do a pretty good job of just kind of cooling off the glass. And then... Um, Supposedly it has no garnish. It specifically says no garnish, so my job is made easy this, this time. I don't have to worry about a garnish. I just have to worry about mixing it correctly. And luckily, it doesn't have any complex ingredients like egg whites or anything, or else I would definitely be prone to make the mistake. So I'm gonna take our chilling glass and just kind of put it off to the side for a little while. The next thing we need is we need to grab a stirring glass, which I have down here, somewhere in the back. I keep it on the bottom because it's inconvenience. Now, mostly because it was the only place that I could put it. It just goes into a mixing glass. Pretty awesome and very, very, very simple. It's not shaken or anything like that. It is, it is a sh uh, stirred, not shaken drink, which I mean, some people take their martinis that way. Some people do. I haven't had a martini in a while, so it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm gonna fill this up with about three quarters of the way with bigger ice cubes, just ice cubes in general. It's basically just to keep things cool for as much as we want, as much as we want it to be. Um, I got some big cubes here. I'll just put two of them in there. I think that's all that we need. There we go. There's one. And we want another one. That's pretty much. I think that's all that I will need. That feels like plenty of glass. Plenty of clear glass cold cubes for me. And of course we'll need a bar spoon, but we'll get to that. I'll take this one. I guess we won't get to that. We'll just put that on the side because lest I forget. But the, to start out with, we're gonna need one and a half ounces of mezcal, which luckily I've placed right here. It's the only mezcal that I have, and apparently the one specifically called for to buy this drink, which is actually quite nice. I just noticed I see something floating in my mezcal. It's nothing crazy. I don't know what that is though. Oh. That's interesting. Well, I don't plan on getting to the bottle, bottom of the bottle today, and honestly, whatever it is, it's probably not going to kill me. Whatever would kill me would probably be the alcohol that's contained in the spirit first before anything else. But we're gonna need one and a half ounces of this mezcal. Aside from just using the Del Magway Vita as like the recommendation, I think you can use pretty much any mezcal that you want, or I guess if you wanted to use something similar to this, I would say this is very similar to a PT scotch or whiskey if you wanted to make a substitution but don't have any sort of mezcals on hand um only for this one i can't speak on behalf of the other del magway vita uh, del magway mezcals of the group but this one's this is a good one and it smells so smoky even from here i can smell that distinct smoky quality add one and a half ounces of your mezcal or that's that's also about oh do some math here it's like 44 44 milliliters yeah yeah it's 44 milliliters and we'll put that in there and we'll put that off to the side the next part here is the dry vermouth, which I happen to have Martini and Rossi dry vermouth with me. It's uh, once upon a time I went to the store and I bought vermouth. I bought the dry vermouth and I bought the sweet vermouth. I have used sweet vermouth so much and I've used barely any dry vermouth. So I'm still working off of the first bottle of vermouth that I ever bought the dry one with Martini and Rossi because I decided to buy the big one, which I then found out years later, like if you wanna, if you're gonna be like a vermouth connoisseur, you gotta get the small bottles because you, do, you, wanna, you wanna conserve them. They're meant to be refrigerated or, I don't really know if the dry vermouth needs to be refrigerated, but I keep it refrigerated and it's pretty good. They recommended, I think it was, it was a Carpano for the for the dry vermouth, the dry Carpano. I have a Carpano Antica sweet vermouth downstairs and it's, awesome so i would think that in this case the vermouth really really shines through and you want to use a more like top shelf off uh option i know the last time i used the sweet vermouth uh i think it was two weeks ago or something i just used the top shelf one or at least relatively top shelf for me because i was like oh man it's gonna have such an effect on the drink but the vermouth was completely lost in the cocktail itself so i was like okay i don't need to use my my good vermouth to this if i were to make that drink again and i don't remember what it was it was like one of the horse themed ones then i could just use excuse me i could use literally any vermouth that i have 
like the quote unquote cheaper stuff. Not to say that Martini and Rossi isn't good. It's that's fine. It definitely gets the job done. But in terms of that, if you've got something more more better, more better than this, you feel free to use it. In any case, we're gonna need a third, three quarters of an ounce of the driver move. That's about 44 divided by two, about 22 milliliters, I think. I always get confused with this measure majigger of mine. I don't know what three, three, three fourths is like that. It's the last line before the top on this one. It's a, it's the, um, what is it? It's the, um, oh, what's the measurement? One third or two thirds. That gets me confused with this particular measuring majigger, not, not the other ones. I'll put that off to the side as well. So we've got our mezcal, we've got our vermouth. We also need, specifically they were saying Tempest Fugit Creme de Banana, but the description says banana liqueur. I don't have creme de banana, no banana-based liqueurs, which are very sweet. I have, I have banana schnapps, um, so I'm gonna use banana schnapps, the only banana-based thing that I have in my collection. Um, specifically 99 bananas, 99 bananas on the wall. Um, and then I ate one, and now there's 98 on the wall. It's, um, I, I don't know whether or not this is, I, I wouldn't consider this very sweet. I mean, it does say banana liqueur. I take it back. It says banana liqueur. I can't even lie to say that this is banana schnapps or anything, because it literally says banana liqueur right on there. And apparently you don't need that much of it. That much is a quarter of an ounce. A quarter of an ounce, or just about seven, seven and a half milliliters, depending on how you're feeling. I've heard a lot about Tempest Fugit liqueurs, and I've always wanted to get some. I don't think I've ever seen them in my particular liquor store. I guess Pennsylvania just doesn't source those the same way that other places do. But I know there are areas online that you can buy uh, liqueurs and stuff on. Personally, I keep getting recommendations for a site called Curiata, I think. It's mostly from like various YouTube channels that I watch. And I think the last time I checked, they do ship liqueurs to my area now. Previously, they did not, at least at the old apartment. But the new apartment, maybe they do? I don't really know, but I just haven't had the need to do like a bulk order online, but apparently I've got all these different ingredients that I might need, and like, that's another thing too, I want to be able to explore different types of liqueurs, but I don't really have like the means to like to motivate myself to be like, oh, I've never seen that particular spirit before, I'm just gonna buy it just to have it, and then have no cocktails to put it in. Granted, I could always make my own cocktails, which I have done before, but like, I don't know, it just feels like a lot of work, and honestly, sometimes... Sometimes I don't feel like making the cocktail. Sometimes it's just about pouring yourself a glass of wine or cracking open a beer, depending on what part of your life you're in. Life right now is settling down a bit. So I think I'm ready to get back into the cocktail swing of things. All right, and so the next ingredient that you need is the final one, and it's two dashes of chocolate or malay bitters. I, for one, um, I bought, there's a place that I go to down south. It's like some preserve shop. I don't remember what it's called something I think like national reserves or something like that i'm not really sure but it's on the island that my family and i go vacationing on down in south carolina and so i just stopped there every year to see what kind of things they have they sell coffee they sell beef jerky they sell oils and and uh, uh butters and bitters and did i mention coffees i also they also have coffees too and various different like beers from the local area um they source it from various different locations i think this guy what he's done is he's just traveled to various different parts of the united states or even the world and been like hmm i want that in my store and then started sourcing it from the area and this is woodford reserve chocolate bitters you only need two drops now in addition to here they say that you could also use mole bitters and mole if i'm i don't know too much about the, what mole really really is but if i'm correct in saying mole is like a chocolate base like mexican i don't know if it's a dessert i don't know if it's a particular dish or anything but i did see mole bitters once in my life and it was one of those occasions where i was just i was in the liquor store and i was like oh mole bitters that sounds really cool i've heard of that before but i don't know where i would possibly use it and i don't really feel like spending the money on it so that was all right and that was what i was gonna go for um so yeah so we added our uh banana liqueur we added our mezcal we added our vermouth dry vermouth specifically and some a couple drops of cocoa bitters to a uh, mixing glass i'm gonna put it all together just stir it up and then put it into the glass. Apparently nothing needs to be garnished. Again, this came from Mezcal Tequila Cocktails by Robert Simonson, a book that I hope to actually be able to have the motivation to go through. I'm just, I'm just not that diligent 
when it comes to reading books and stuff. So if I wind up forgetting to do it or just sits on the shelf for a while, um, I try to put it in an obvious area so I don't forget about it. But honestly, I, I forget. I forget sometimes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna zoom in a little bit. Actually, there's really there's really not much going on here. I don't admit. I'll just do a small little zoom just to just to give you an idea. This is just a very it's it's a very clear cocktail. There's really there's really no color here at all. It's it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, let's give that a stir. I don't have my yoga blocks today, so I'm not gonna put it on top of the yoga blocks. There we go. And then, really, all we gotta do, actually, it said to stir for 30 seconds, so uh, I'm gonna zoom back out for a moment. I'll keep, I'll keep on stirring while I zoom back out. It's a slow and steady process. I, I beg you, forgive me. I beg you, please. That seems like it's far enough. It needs to be about 30 seconds, so considering the 30 seconds of it all. How's your night going so far? It's going all right? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I had a very pleasant week so far. It's been it's been pretty pretty good. Things have kind of done done down a little bit. I saw a buddy of mine yesterday. It was great. We went out for Greek food. It was wonderful. Gonna have some more friends coming over tomorrow. We're gonna play some board games, and it's a pretty chill weekend. Oh, and next weekend, uh, next week on Tuesday, I get to go see Ninja Sex Party in concert. I'm so happy about that. And we have some friends coming up for that too. Really looking forward to it. In any case, if that wasn't 30 seconds. Then I don't know how time works, and I think I know how time works. Now what we're gonna do now is gotta take that glass that was chilling of ours and just discard all the ice. I don't need it anymore. I put it right on top of my markers. Nobody really cares. Just pour them into a glass and see how it tastes. This was Fearman's, Fearman, Fearman's Folly. Fearman being the lead character in a book called Under the Volcano. What his folly was, I have absolutely no idea. I know the book calls for no garnish, but I feel like because it, it looks so much like a martini that it really should have like like a, an olive or something on it. I just, I get that vibe. Please excuse me for a moment as I take my Sharpie chalk markers out of the bin that has ice in it now because i just realized that or just remembered that the markers are water soluble and if it gets inside then i could very well destroy the marker and i don't want to do that in any case cheers this was Furman's folly using one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of mezcal of your choice it used also three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of dry vermouth of your choice i suppose and there was also a quarter of an ounce or about 7.5 milliliters of banana liqueur or creme de banana whichever one you have and two dashes or drops or whatever of chocolate or mole bitters i use chocolate bitters right off the bat Smells like it's definitely got that strong mezcal uh, nose to it. I'm also getting a little bit of the... A little bit of the... It, I, I think I think it's the, the cocoa bitters that I'm smelling there. Although I'm trying to... I'm telling myself, oh, it's got to be the banana. But no, I think I think it's actually the chocolate coming through there on the, on the nose. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, let's break that down for a moment. So, it's a very, it's smooth. I would I would call that, and, and not in any negative terms, a very watery drink, in the sense that all of the flavors that are happening are all happening in a manner that none of them are particularly overtaking the others. I think most prominently, what I feel in the back now is the smokiness of the mezcal hitting me. Right off the tongue, I got like, like, it might have been the sweetness of the banana liqueur. Let me go in for it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, so right off that, like, the first thing that I get is, like, the sweetness from the banana liqueur, and it's also combining with the characteristics of the dry vermouth. I feel like the banana here, it's very, it's very subtle. It's very subtle, and I think I get it, like, kind of in the, in the mid part of my tongue, although that might, that might be the chocolate bitters there. I'm trying to piece things. I'm trying to piece things apart, but I think what I'm getting is mezcal in the back, chocolate and banana in the middle, and then I guess that vermouth right out the top. I'll admit I haven't, I haven't had vermouth. I haven't had a dry vermouth in a while, so I'm wondering if I can piece out what flavor, what what flavor component I'm getting there. Let me put a little bit in my. I'm not using my measuring majigger anymore, so let's try it. Oh, there's like a. Okay, I remember now. It's like a almost balsamic sourness and i think now that i now that i realize that that's where the sweetness is coming from right off the top 
it's the sweetness of the banana combining with the vermouth. I mean, I did say that. No, no that's that's totally accurate. I'm t I'm totally into that. Hmm. Yeah. I'd say that's very, very enjoyable. I'd say there's a good amount of complexity there. It's very, it's like, the mezcal is definitely like leading the charge on the ship. However, like there's, there's like a, if I'm gonna go with this like boating analogy, there's a crew that's made up of a couple of different characters and each one of them are bringing their own personalities to the table, I suppose. But it's definitely being spearheaded by the mezcal. And it's like, it's a nice, it's like a nice, or I guess the mezcal is like the ocean in this case, is the, the boat is like, I don't know, this, this analogy is completely falling apart. In any case, it's it's a cocktail that, if I had to think about it, does kind of feel like a martini in the sense that it's the main spirit that really gets to shine and what you add to it is just as a means to like very slightly tweak different characteristics of it. So like, if you like mezcal or if you like something a little smoky this almost waters it down for you it makes it a little more palatable it makes it not as astringent on the top i would say i think the first time that i tried the mezcal it was like whoa like a kick in the face but this feels more like a like a somebody took their shoe and just kind of like tapped my face with it or like grazed it ever so slightly like in a pleasant way and i'm not saying i enjoy a shoe against my face but in the analogy of it all it's kind of like somebody took a fine textured boot and was like right against my face except the boot is mezcal and my face in this case is the tongue so let's try not to get that mixed up i don't want any i'm not i'm not a boot licker not anything like that that's very very pleasant i really really like that i'd say if i had to give it points i suppose I don't really like this point system. However, it's up there. It's It's got a complexity. It exists in various different parts of my mouth in all the best ways. And I would totally recommend that to somebody. Like this feels like I would, something that I would order at a restaurant be, because I saw mezcal on it and would be pleasantly surprised to be like, wow, this is a really like set the mood for the evening kind of cocktail. Like I can feel the rest of my evening like starting right now. That's how it's going to be. And I'm going to look forward to it as well. In any case, I know uh, I am mostly keeping things kind of short this time around. In the whole, in the whole like new format of things, my intent, just for the sake of full transparency, not that you care, but I just feel like sharing it. I'm kind of turning the Wednesday nights into more like kind of smaller streams. If you if you happen to pop in for the cocktail hour, awesome. If not, no worries about it. What I kind of want to try to do is I'm trying to like experiment with more like short form content. Cause like, you know, I made a single cocktail and it's been like basically a half hour since we've been here. And I feel like you can accomplish that in like a minute or a little bit less than that. Not really a type of content that I've ever made before, but I've always been kind of like curious about it. Cause I've been on TikTok for so long and well, I guess not that long, I'm not not crazy like that and like youtube and stuff and i see like very very like i feel like i gain i personally gain a lot of benefit from the people who are like hey here's a quick recipe in like 10 seconds there you go have a great day and i was like wow i love the energy that these people bring to these platforms like i want to do that too and so i've been kind of like trying to like section off a little bit more time to really be able to focus on those things i haven't started yet no progress has been made but the best time to start i suppose is right now and that's exactly what I plan on doing afterwards. I'd probably keep the camera on. However, my computer can't handle doing all that recording and stuff, and I don't really feel like doing the editing. It's so, oh, it's so complex, and I can bring up a number of excuses, but I just I just don't have the time for it. And so if you're really curious about that stuff, I plan, I have, I have a TikTok that I intend on posting things on, all the cocktail stuff. There's a YouTube as well, which I don't know whether or not it's gonna go on the archive YouTube. Probably goes on the other one. There's another YouTube, which I have no links for right now, but it'll be there eventually. There is also a Discord server. I post all the drinks that I wind up doing on there as well for, it's that digestible content. You can take a picture of it. You can copy and paste it. It's so easy to do. I know I'm the kind of person who's a hoarder. And so I like to hoard electronics. I like to hoard cables. I like to hoard computer parts. And I also like to hoard recipes that I may never touch. Although I really, really want to. That's why I have all these books. There's probably hundreds of cocktails in my collection that I can make, but I don't even, I don't even know where to start with from it. And I feel like there's a, I feel like there's a, maybe a potential opportunity for, uh, I mean, different platforms to be able to be like, well, actually I know of a particular platform. I like platforms. If there's a platform out there that is specifically able to i tell you what ingredients i have you tell me what i can make with it and i think the, the app that i use is pretty good at that it's not not the best it's called recipe keeper um 
It's all right. That's where I put all my stuff on. In any case, thank you all very much. This has been very fun, and this is where I'm going to leave things off from here. It is a small and short night, but that's totally okay. It's totally fine. To everybody who came by for the cocktail hour, I appreciate your presence very, very much. I look forward to seeing you all again on Monday for a game, and on Wednesday again for another cocktail. Perhaps one, perhaps two. Perhaps none at all, and it was all just a ruse, and you don't know. Mezcal, ladies, gentlemen, those who fall in between or beyond, enjoy it. And if it's the nighttime where you are, like it is for me, please have a wonderful rest of your night. I have much that I plan on exploring this evening, and it's only, it's not even, dude, it's not even 9 o'clock yet. The night is still so young, and I've already got a cocktail. Maybe you do too. Perhaps not. That's okay. In any case, if the sun is shining where you are, please have a wonderful rest of your morning. If the moon is shining where you are, please have a wonderful evening. No matter where you are, twilight, dawn, east, west, north or south, up or down, please have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you everybody so much. My name was Cameron. I'll see you all another time. Bye.